Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome to Ink Dependence. Today we're taking a look at this pen, which is the Kaveco Perkio. This is their new entry level pen in the line. And uh, it's quite it's quite the sensation, I think. A lot of people are liking this pen. They've only recently become available. Audrey got this in the at the San Francisco Pen Show. I believe she said she got it from Van Ness, where they sell for about 16 bucks a piece. So a solid entry-level price, not particularly expensive for a decent fountain pen. And uh, this is a very decent fountain pen. So uh, my, my early review is, I like this pen. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, this pen and its design aesthetic. We'll talk about uh, some other entry-level pens that it's... it's uh, competing with, show some size comparisons, and do a little writing sample. That's the plan. All right. So this is the bad taste color combination, which is a sort of like light corally kind of cap with a nice uh, soft black barrel. Uh, it has Kaveco uh, finial or a little jewel here in the finial. There it is. And uh, you can see it just spells out Kaveco. I believe this is actually a metal piece that's uh, set into the plastic cap. It's actually a very nice little design detail. I like it quite a lot. You can see a little bit around there. I don't know, it's an interesting uh, interesting detail they put on there. The only other branding on the pen on the outside is, uh, let's do it this way, is right here where it's got the uh, Kaveco and Germany in the cap. But that's actually pretty subtle. You can barely see it. Um, down here at the end, you'll again see Germany around the bottom. Come on, focus. There we go. You also see that interesting inset ring, and that's kind of weird. I don't know why they decided to put that on there, but there is a hole uh, under there somewhere, and you can so you can't eyedropper this pen because it'll just all leak out the back. So word of the wise, don't eyedropper this otherwise perfectly eyedropperable pen. I don't know why they'd bother to do that. Uh, the barrel has 16 sides. None of these angles are uh, are very sharp. They all feel nice in the hand. And then here we have eight sides on the cap. So, there you go. That's the exterior of this pen. Interior, take off the cap, which is a nice slip cap. It comes off very easily, but it's not going to fall off for sure. Not that you'll be pinning this to anything. No clip. So, if you're a clipless fan, this might be a good option for you. Let's look inside the cap right here. You'll see if I can get it to focus. There we go. You can actually see the inner cap liner in there, which is actually a really nice feature. Uh, that keeps your nib from going dry, restricts how much air is sitting around the nib. And I've had no hard starts or uh, any other weird like nib behavior from this pen. Now, granted, I've only had this for a couple of weeks. Uh, well, I've only been borrowing it, I guess, for about a week. Uh, this is actually Audrey's pen, as I mentioned, and it's pretty new. So it hasn't had an option to go dry. And inside the pen, it has a converter. Uh, rather, a, um, a cartridge. You can also totally put a converter in there. There is plenty of room in this barrel for a converter. Uh, this is an interesting feature. It's listed on at least one or two of the websites as being like uh, kind of a sort of an ink window. So if you unscrew it just a little bit, you can look in there and see how much ink you have in your cartridge or converter. It's not a it's not a very clear ink window. I don't really know why it's there. I'm not I'm not really I'm not really sold on that as an ink window, but it might be helpful. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. This is just the Kaveco cartridge that it came with. Uh, I've used about half a cartridge on this guy. I don't. Audrey's only used it like once or twice, so I got to give it back to her. Uh, put that back on there. You'll see that the color from the cap is carried through in the band here uh, that um, it goes up against the barrel and also down here next to the nib. The grip section is a very nice. Uh, well, it's got these like sort of triangular cutouts, sort of like you'll see on a Lamy Safari, but the edges here are really rounded off and. I think you could totally hold this in whatever weird way you wanted and it wouldn't be uncomfortable. Audrey hasn't had any problems with it and she doesn't particularly care for the safari. So that might be a, a good thing for y'all who, um, you know, don't like those triangular grips. This one is really soft. Um, the nib is the same Bach nib, I believe, that they put on the uh, Kaveco Sports and probably some of their other pens. It seems to have a different feed, though. This doesn't look like the rest of them do. Um, it's slightly different. And of course the nib is blacked out, which is pretty cool, especially when you have a black pen, black body, all this sort of thing. Uh, and then the nib is blacked out. Uh, it has all the regular Kaveco stuff on there. So pretty typical nib for Kaveco. Uh, the plastic, like the feel of this is that it's a fairly light plastic. It's, it's a very light pen in the hand. Uh, I, I don't have a scale to weigh it, but uh, pretty light. It, it doesn't feel cheap though. I gotta say that this feels like a nice, it feels like a nice plastic. I don't know what they use, but it feels almost soft. Like it's not bendy at all. It's still stiff, but it's got a soft feel to it. And I really kind of dig that. 
All right, so let's l uh, look at a couple of the other sort of pens that this will be in competition with. Um, here we have the uh, the uh, Kaveco Perkyo, and this sells for between uh, like. Uh, the lowest I've seen is like fourteen ninety five at Jet Pens. You'll find it for sixteen pretty much everywhere else. You'll find it, uh, so you know that's a pretty solid range, fourteen to sixteen bucks. Uh, other stuff in that range and other stuff in the like intro pens category are um, this one, which probably ought to come to mind kind of first. This has been the reigning champion of intro pens for quite a while. This is the Pilot MR Metropolitan. Uh, this one's actually not a Metropolitan. This is the animal print or whatever they call it but this is the pilot mr and you'll find these online for like v wildly different prices but they come in between uh between like um 12 and 15 bucks sometimes you'll see them as low as 10 but i've heard the price on these is actually going to go up to like in the like 20 ish and i'm not shocked this is an aluminum body it's metal it's got a better like you know more a hefty feel to it uh, definitely will make you feel like you're getting more for your money, I suppose. It's got metal components instead of uh, plastic ones. The section still plastic, though, and smaller, I believe, than the one on the Kakuno. Uh, so there's one competitor. It's also up against things like this, the Pilot Plumix, which comes in around 10 bucks. These are available with a stub nib. Also, I think the, uh, the Metropolitans are available with a stub nib sometimes, too. Uh, whereas the um, Perkyo only comes in fine, medium, and broad. Uh, I'm pretty sure it comes up to broad. Maybe only fine a medium, actually, now that I think about it. This is a fine, and it writes a little bit on the wide side. It's kind of a medium, so I'd, you know, check that one out. Uh, and then, of course, a couple of other, like, real cheapies. Uh, we've got the uh, Pilot Petite One, which is a little pocket pen type thing. You can't really find this in the American market. you got to go to, like, Jet Pens or um, Amazon to get them, and they come in real cheap. I forget what these go for. This is, a like, quasi-disposable, although it does have an ink cartridge. It's not really disposable. Very cool little pocket pen. And then the Kaveco Sport, which comes in around 20 25 bucks, depending on the model and all that kind of thing. They also go up to, like, the AC Sports and all these other kinds of things, which are over 100 bucks. So these vary wildly as well. Um, other things in this range might be up to... I don't know, 30 bucks, I think, is kind of the limit for the intro pens, and those are for, like, the um, the Twisby Ecos and stuff like that. So this is the main competition, not really these two, because this one's way cheaper, and this one's much more expensive. So kind of these are the competitive bits uh, for this pen. Oh, wait, one more. Almost forgot about the Pilot Kakuno. Man, Pilot has had this uh, this segment locked down for a while. Uh, and this goes for between 10 and 14 bucks. So in terms of price... Um, Kind of goes like this, and then the Kaveco is sort of at the top-ish range. I don't know, I guess it may be kind of like this. He's going to vary wildly depending on where you get it. Uh, Japanese pens always do. There's always a, a, different, a, much, a big cost difference you know, between here and uh, Japan. So as far as these go, these two are actually in pretty close competition, I think. The Metro and the Plumix. The Plumix is like this weird little art pen thing that most people, I think, buy because it either looks like a squid, which I think is cool, or because they like that, uh, that stub nib that comes in there. But uh, the Metro and the Kakuno are both pretty good competitors. Putting it up against the Kakuno, I think the plastic on the Perkyo is a lot nicer than the Kakuno. The Kakuno always feels cheap to me. Uh, I don't know why exactly. It's a cute pen, and I really dig it. It's got a... I mean, look at that. It's got a smiley face in the nib. That's adorable. Uh, and the fine on the Kakuno is really very, very fine, as opposed to the fine here on the... Um, on the Perkyo, which is much more medium-ish. So if it's between these two, I'm going to pick the Perkyo. It's a couple bucks more than the Kakuno, but I think the plastic feels nicer. It's a little bit bigger, which I like. Um, and it's got, like, a, I, th I think I like the section a little bit better. Uh, and to tell the truth, I actually like Kaveco's nibs better than I like Pilot's uh, intro nibs. These nibs just never really did it for me. The fines are super extra fine. And the mediums are, I mean, they're okay. Whereas this one feels like a really nice pen. I, I like the way it writes a lot. I've got no complaints about it. So I think it beats the Kakuno. Um, and then the Pilot uh, Metropolitan MR, I don't really know how to rank these. Uh, it's going to depend entirely upon your taste. They're very, very different looks. The nibs are quite different, although the nib here is the same as the nib on the Kakuno, basically. Just a different graphic. Um, so heavier, made of metal, a little bit more expensive or a little bit cheaper, depending on where you get it. Uh, lighter, made of plastic, more of a beater pin, I think. Like, you're going to have to try to hurt this thing. Whereas the Kakuno always feels a little bit fragile to me. Oh, I should have also put in this range, I suppose, on the extra cheap end, the Platinum Preppy. I didn't bring any of those upstairs with me. Um, 
but I don't treat those as beater pens. I really like the nibs on them, but the plastic is just too fragile. That stuff breaks if you look at it wrong. So you can't just throw it in a backpack or a purse. Whereas I think you could totally throw this in a backpack or a purse. The cap doesn't come off super easily. It's not just going to fall off accidentally. So there's a bunch of uh, little pins in that starter category. Let's look at them uh, in a pin box right quick and show different sizes and such. Okay, so here are a bunch of them in uh, a pin tray. So they're all lined up nicely. Uh, and I'm going to go from sort of uh, largest to, to smallest here. This is the Plumix we were just looking at from Pilot. This is the Kaveco Special, which is in brass. It's a much different pen, a whole different price bracket, uh, but same general size. The Pilot Metropolitan, or MR. The uh, uh, Kaveco Perkyo. The Pilot Kakuno. This is a little Esterbrook uh, transitional pen with the little toaster top on it, which I think is cool. Uh, and just for like size comparisons, in case you don't have any of these others laying around, most people have seen Brooks. This is the Franklin Christoph 45, which is a, a pocket pen. The Kaveco Sport, which is another little pocket pen style guy. And then that little Petite One, I threw that in the tray as well, because hey, why not? Uh, and so you can see that this is pretty well situated right in the middle of the pack. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good size. This is a really legit size. Pretty much the same size as the as the uh, the Pilot, although thicker throughout the body. A little bit uh, bigger than the Kakuno, but nothing serious in terms of like size difference. So it's right in that kind of like nice sweet spot. These are a little bit small for me to use without posting. These are all fine without posting. So you know that your mileage is going to vary because your hands might be a different size than mine, right? <laughs> so there you go. All right, so let's get set up for a writing sample and then get out of here. Hold on just a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's that Perkyo again. We're much, much closer. And there's that fine nib. As I said, this, this feels like a bit more medium than fine. I asked the internet what I should write with this guy, and uh, I got a bunch of responses, so I'm just going to pick my favorite out of that group. And uh, that is this. And this comes from our friend Tony. Although not really from Tony. This sounds a whole lot like a quote I might have heard somewhere in a little movie called The Princess Bride. Uh, this pen has no problem starting right up. It is uh, a little bit on maybe the wet side, I suppose, but it's really pretty medium. It dries very quickly. This is the uh, the Pen Addict's um, uh, notebook, the Knock notebook, and uh, I really like this paper a lot. It doesn't have any problems with like bleeding or feathering or anything. It's a little bit show through, but no big deal. And uh, this pen writes very well. Here's your little smear test in case you're a person that likes that stuff. I can barely make it smear. It soaks in pretty quick. But uh, anyway, this has no problem writing quickly. Uh, it's got uh, no problems with flow. I've never seen it go dry. So, you know, no problems at all with this pen. So this has been the Kaveco Perkyo. The Kaveco Perkyo is available for purchase at, uh, well, several places online. So just hit the Googles for it. We bought this one, so there's nobody sponsoring this particular uh uh, pen review. You can find it, I think, cheapest at jetpens.com where it goes for like $14.95. So definitely worth checking out there. And you can see all the colors and that sort of thing there as well. Uh, let me know what you think of this cute little uh, Kaveco. And uh, I will see y'all later on. Peace out. Hey folks, was that a helpful video? If it was, check out these videos over here on the left-hand side of this card. Also, please consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell icon also if you want to be notified when I go live on Fridays. And uh, hey, uh, definitely consider being a patron. Patrons are the best. That's it. Peace out.